What's up everybody, it's your boy Nate. An effect that I get asked a lot by clients to do time and time again, one in which the text writes on the screen, so a text write-on effect. Now this is normally because it mimics how we interact with text on a daily basis. Now we've already talked about a handwriting text effect in which it literally looks like it's being drawn on by hand, but we haven't talked about how to make it look like it's being typed on since most of us nowadays are using our phones to type or using our computers to type, and that's how we've grown more accustomed to seeing text getting generated. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about how to make digital text and how to make it even look like it's being typed on. I actually want to make it look like there's someone behind the scenes who's actually thinking about what to type. There's going to be a little bit of pauses and let's say they even want to delete some text and then add something in. We're going to be doing that as well. The cool thing about this effect is that it's going to be completely procedurally done. That means once we have the basic setup down, we can go ahead and change this to say any text that we want it to say and it's still going to have that really nice animation. If this is your first time on the channel, we talk about all sorts of really dope motion graphics, 3D animation, and compositing tricks. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, ding that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the super dope stuff that we got planned. Also, if you guys are already subscribed, I want to send a huge thank you because thanks to you, we're that much closer to our goal of hitting 500,000 subscribers by the end of this year. I know that's super ambitious, but I also know we can do it thanks to your help. Anyways, I'm super excited. I know you are too. All right, let's go. So digital text on screen can be used in a number of very useful scenarios, such as mimicking how text looks when you're sending a text message to a blackmailer, writing an essay about poop, or stopping a nuclear war in the 1980s. Either way, we're going to be talking about how to create a text effect that will work in all of these scenarios. We're going to be talking about the underlying fundamentals so you can use this effect in a number of really cool situations. Anyways, let's first hop right into After Effects. So right here, I'm in After Effects, and the very first step is to make a brand new composition. Next, we're gonna go ahead and type in some text with the type tool, which is all the way up here. I'm gonna go ahead and type in congrats because congratulations, you guys are learning a new effect. One thing I'm gonna make sure to do is make those paragraph options set to left justified. That way, when we start animating this text, it's gonna be coming from left to right. If you guys were to keep this center justified, it would animate from the center. And sometimes that looks kind of weird because most text that we type actually goes from left to right. Now, to animate this effect and make it procedural, Drill, we're going to be using something in After Effects called Expressions, and these work a little bit differently than the default effects that come in After Effects. Now, Expressions use code to control the animations, but you can still control the expressions themselves by utilizing something called Expression Effect Controls, which are effects that control expressions. And if this sounds a little bit confusing to you and you've never heard of them before, trust me, this effect is going to be a really great introduction. So the first control effect that we're going to add is a slider control, and you can find this effect by right clicking on that text layer, going all the way up to effects, and then going over to expression controls. And the last one there is gonna be the slider control. Alternatively, you can also add this effect by using the super useful plugin, FX Console. I love this plugin so much because it is completely free and it lets you have this pop-up window to where we can just type in effects and bam, instantly they're applied. If you have never heard of FX Console before until now, I recommend you check out our best plugins for After Effects video after you're done with this tutorial. It covers a whole bunch of really awesome and useful effects. And the cool thing is it'll really revolutionize the way that you use After Effects. Anyways, after we've added in the slider control effect, you're going to see its options up in the effects controls panel. And by default, this does absolutely nothing. So I can change these values and bam, nothing is happening. But this effect is going to become super useful in a bit. For now, let's just rename it by right clicking on this effect. Now, note, this is super, super important. So don't forget this step, rename this expression expression control to text because we're going to be referencing it later. Next, let's add another expression control and this one is going to be called the checkbox control. This one is a little bit different because as you can see, there is no slider, but instead a checkbox, which is like a light switch in that it's either on or it's off. And let's go ahead and rename this one here on off as well. Again, this is super, super important. Do not forget to rename these control effects to the ones I have listed here because these are going to be referenced in those expressions later on once we get into the code. Now for adding in the magic to this effect, we're going to be clicking on this arrow on the text layer, which is going to drop down a menu in which we're going to see the stopwatch icon by source text. We're going to hold alt on our keyboard and then left mouse click 
And this is gonna turn this value into expression mode. If you were to regularly click on it, instead of holding Alt, what you're gonna see is the stopwatch icon turns blue, and then we're gonna get a new keyframe getting made, but this is not what we want. So make sure you go ahead and press Alt and then left click on it. That way you get this nice drop down, which is where you're gonna be entering all the code that's gonna drive this animation. Now, once you're more advanced and you've mastered expressions, you can go ahead and create your own expressions, but 90% of the time, someone else has already made a code for something that you want. So I recommend checking online first or looking at our best expressions video for really useful ones that you can just copy and paste right in there. And they're gonna be delivering results time and time again. For this effect, I'm gonna be leaving the expression that we're gonna be using down in that description box, you know, right when you're passing that like button, which I recommend you guys hit, by the way, if you're enjoying this video. It does a tremendous amount for the channel and helps us out a lot. So thanks <laughs> when you guys hit that button. Yeah, you're gonna see that entire expression down there in the description box. And all you have to do is actually just copy and paste it into this section here on your expression area for this hex layer. So bam, once we have that expression in there, you're gonna see if we hit play, really nothing happens except our text is probably gonna be cut off and this blinking cursor is gonna blink. So we're almost there. Now, when we go back to the expression control effects, we can move the slider to the left or to the right to animate it. And higher values are gonna type on the text while lower values are gonna erase it. And this works based on on how many letters are in the text that we've generated. So if I want to animate this text on, I just have to hit the stopwatch icon when it's at zero, move forward in the timeline, and then slide that slider controller so it has higher values until that text is generated. And we can also do the same thing for the checkbox control, which all this one does is actually turns on or off that blinking cursor icon. So we can leave this on in the beginning of the animation, and then at the very end, we can add a keyframe to where this checkbox is off. And that's just going to animate it from on to off as if you're done typing the text and you've gone on to something else. To animate this on, we're gonna start at frame one and then click the stopwatch icon next to the slider control for text and have that value at zero. Then we're gonna go to the end of our animation and slide this value up until our text is shown. Now when we play it back, it looks like someone is typing. We can do the same thing for the on off switch to get rid of that cursor at the end of the animation. And bam, just like that, we've mastered the typing on effect. Now the great thing about this setup is that it is procedural and expression based so we can double click on this text and change it to say whatever we want and the animation will still remain. So if a client says, hey, actually we've changed our mind, sorry about that. Can you make it say welcome instead of congrats? Guess what? It won't take you a tremendously long amount of time to just reanimate everything one by one. Instead, all you have to do is just double click on that text layer, retype in the text that you want it to say, and then maybe change those end values to be a little bit higher to compensate for the additional characters in that word. Also, if you wanna make this text look a little bit more natural by adding additional keyframes to mimic someone thinking about the text. We can do so by putting an additional keyframe here in the beginning, right when only a portion of the word is typed on, and then we can copy and paste that same keyframe a little bit later in the timeline, and bam, it looks uh, way more natural. If you also want to change the blinking symbol at the end of the text to be something different, so instead of just a straight line like most text processors are using, you can make it say whatever you want, like you can change it to a dollar sign, you can change it to an under score. And the way that you do that is by going into this expression area, double clicking on it so it's editable. And then where you see the variable sign or var sign, change that variable in the parentheses to whatever you want. And it's going to then update on your text layer after you exit out of that. The blink interval value in the expressions will also let you change how fast the blink speed is. But 90% of the time, I keep these two at their defaults because they look great. So just like that, we're ready to render this out. If you guys are curious who actually originally wrote this expression, I found this from Jacob Circia of AE Juice, which is pretty cool that we can use other creators' expressions and animations of our own. So thanks Jacob Circia for posting this one. Let's go ahead and render out this animation. So I'm just gonna go ahead all the way up to the composition, add to render queue, render this one out, and here is the final result. Now I showed you a really awesome procedural way to make this effect and have it customizable on your own terms. But if you want something a little bit faster, After Effects actually comes with its own preset, which is the word processor or typewriter preset. And once you apply this to a text layer, it instantly adds an effect that looks pretty similar to this, except you may not have as much free range or control over it as you'd like. So that's why I like going the expression route because for the most part, I like having that blinking cursor there. And it really helps if I need to change something later on to have this expression set up. Not only that, but it's a really great introduction to understanding how expression controls and expressions can help drive animations in really unique and interesting ways that help save you a lot of time in the long run and can get a 
apply to a whole bunch of different projects on their own. If you guys are curious on how else to add more to this effect, I recommend you check out this video. It is the top 30 effects built into After Effects. And these ones are gonna show you real world use case scenarios where different effects that come right into After Effects can be combined together, to make some really amazing looking results. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace. Whee!